Welcome to our video series on breast cancer. This is a big topic that we'll try to cover in the simplest possible way. We all know that breast cancer is the most common cause of cancer in women, and it's actually the second leading cause of cancer death among women in the United States. And actually, I think it's also the second leading cause of, death, of cancer death at large. Hmm. We also know that one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer at some point in their lifetime. So if we put this in perspective, it means that if you take, for example, eight women that you see daily, one of them will be diagnosed with breast cancer at some point. So DM, you're a breast surgeon, you operate on uh, women who are diagnosed with breast cancer. Why don't you talk to us about the most common types of breast cancer? So the three most common types that I think are relevant are ductal, uh, invasive ductal carcinoma, invasive lobular carcinoma, and uh, inflammatory breast cancer. Now, invasive ductal carcinoma is by far the most common. It comprises about 80% of the breast cancers. It comes from the ducts, uh, of the, like the lining of the ducts in the breast uh, lobules. And um, it often will present as a firm mass that is more or less mobile. Uh, it can be a bit rubbery in texture. Uh, but sometimes uh, the patient can also be asymptomatic, and this is picked up on a mammogram. Okay. Now, the second type mm -hmm. is the invasive lobular carcinoma. So, invasive lobular carcinoma is the second uh, most common type of breast cancer. It comprises about 10% of breast cancer. It's um, a cancer that I would describe as more insidious because it um, it less likely presents as a palpable mass. Mm -hmm. It also is more difficult to pick up on the mammogram, mm -hmm. generally speaking. It also is more often multifocal, and of the breast cancers, it's also, also, it's also the one that is most often uh, bilateral. Okay. Yeah. And what about the third type, which is inflammatory breast cancer? So inflammatory breast cancer is the most aggressive form of breast cancer. It's about 1% of all breast cancers. Now, this cancer rarely presents itself first as a mass, and it often presents itself as um, with symptoms that mimic one that resemble an infection. Okay. So you will have swelling of the breast, redness, heaviness, changes of the skin. You will have this like sort of pitting of the skin that makes it look almost like an orange peel. Hence, we call it the peau d'orange. It uh, also sometimes can present itself with a lump under the armpit mm -hmm. that is associated with a, a very quick progression and a spreading of mm -hmm. the tumor. Mm -hmm. And I think the important thing in this case is to, whenever you see, we see a patient with a breast or we think it's a breast infection, we always have to keep in mind that, you know, there's something more aggressive right. resembling it. So kind of always have the red flag on exactly. our, in our mind. Exactly. to investigate further and not make sure we don't miss the inflammatory cancer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think another thing that we hear a lot about is receptor status. So um, why don't you tell us about this? What, what does it represent? What does it mean? Why is it so important? So receptor status is actually quite important. Now, on your breast cells, like once your cancer is removed, it's being sent to pathology. And then the pathologist, besides measuring the tumor, it look, they look at the cells and they also do many, um, I would say, dye testing mm -hmm. of your breast cells. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that your pathology test, your pathologist will test for is whether there is presence of receptor on the walls of the cells for estrogen and progesterone, which we call ER and PR receptors. Now, when you do have these receptors, what happens is that both the hormone estrogen and progesterone can come and dock themselves onto the receptors and stimulate the cell to grow and divide. Mm -hmm. Hence, it is important to know the status of them in the cases of breast cancer. Because if you do have the presence of these receptors, they're, they're not only an indication of prognosis, so it's believed that if you do have positive receptors, you have a better prognosis, but also that you can use some medication, as you will see in the adjuvant treatment uh, video, 
to, to, to give to the patient and decrease the chances of the, the cancer recurring, both locally and distally mm -hmm. in the future. Okay, and um, so we've talked about the estrogen receptor and the progesterone uh, receptor. Are there other receptors that are tested? Yeah, so we will test also for the HER2 status. Now, the human epidermal growth uh, gene is a gene that actually produces human epidermal growth pack, like receptors on the cell walls. Mm -hmm. Now, this gene is associated with the replication and the multiplication of your cells. What happens is that if the gene is defective, it is amplified, then it produces too many receptors okay. on the cell wall, then uh, making the cell divide in an uncontrolled way. Mm -hmm. And when you are tested for the status and you are HER2+, plus, it means your gene has been uh, def has become defective and is now amplified. Okay. Your status is then HER2+. Plus. Or positive. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if you're HER2 positive, it is associated with a less good prognosis, mm -hmm. but there's a there also exists a medication called Herceptin, that your medical oncologist can give the patient with HER2 plus status to actually, uh, you know, as an adjuvant treatment. Okay. Um, and now let's talk about um, lymph node sampling. So we did uh, brush on that topic when we were talking about the different types of uh, surgeries for breast cancer patients. So tell us about um, why is lymph node sampling so important? So lymph nodes sampling is quite important because it gives your um, doctor, either your surgeon or your radiation oncologist or your medical the oncologist, entire team, essentially. the entire team, yeah. an idea of the propensity for your cancer to spread elsewhere. And so your nodal status is based both on the number of nodes that are involved, but on how much they're involved. So when the nodes are sent to the pathologist, the pathologist cuts these nodes into pieces and will give you a report to tell you how many nodes have been involved, but also inside of them, is it a macroscopic or a microscopic involvement? Right. And all of these uh, are taken into account when the team decides what kind of adjuvant treatment you will have. It also obviously influences your staging and then your prognosis. Mm -hmm. I think another important um, thing to discuss, I, I often hear patients um, who seem to be confused between the grade and the stage. So can you clarify and make the kind of differentiate the two for us? Okay, so the grade um, is just about your cancer cell. So it is one more characteristic of how aggressive the cell in itself is. The grade is numbered from one to three, and the higher your number, the less, uh, the more, the less differentiated is your cell, which means the more different it is from a normal cancer cell. So meaning a more aggressive. Exactly. Uh -huh. So the higher number, the more aggressive okay. your cell is. And so the grade is um, essentially determined by the pathologist who analyzes the cells. Exactly. Your pathologist looks at everything mm -hmm. in a microscope, right? Right. So what you see as a, what a you mass. feel as a mass clinically is made up of millions of cells. And when you're sent that to the pathologist, everything is cut up in like micro millimeters mm -hmm. and looked at at a cellular level, basically mm -hmm. just like these little cells. And so that's how they can define the grade. Exactly. Okay. So now what about the stage? So the stage is an indication of the tumor burden in the whole body. Mm -hmm. And the, the stage is defined by the TNM classification. And so what, is, what does TNM stand for? So the TNM classification is what is used to classify pretty much all the cancers. And the three letters stand for tumor size, nodal involvement, so the different different lymph nodes areas that can be involved mm -hmm. and the M stands for metastases. Okay. And um, it actually is quite a complicated uh, classification. So we're going to include a table somewhere so that you can consult it. But the take home message from the staging is that the higher your stage, the higher the tumor burden you have in your body. 
and that will be related to your prognosis and your overall survival from the breast cancer. Right. And I think it's important to specify also that the stage can really only be um, cl clarified after surgery. Yeah. So the stage is definitely determined on the pathology, mm -hmm. right? So in the final pathology. Right. And my patients often ask me at the first consultation or the second consultation when we haven't finished uh, all the investigation, mm -hmm. what is my stage? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, how bad is this or how good it is? Uh, now, we do have an idea. But we don't. We can't say the final uh, right. staging. So of we your can disease. say it's at least this, this stage, but it, but it be, cannot. It, it could be a different stage based on the definitive pathology. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to stop here today. It's a lot of new information. So I hope you learned something. And uh, please make sure to press on the like button and give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. Also make sure to post uh, your questions in the comment section below and we'll make sure to, add, to answer them for you. And we will see you next time. Yeah, and also if you're interested, we did do more videos on the breast cancer series. So we will put them in the section and you can consult all of them to have more uh, information on both the surgery and the adjuvant treatment. Thank you. We'll see you next week. I'm not ready. Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? I think so. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay.